All right, captains, it is time for the French Navy's Tier 5 cruiser, Emile Berton. Now, while the French line is becoming notorious for spamming the high explosive shells at damn near everybody in the bomb, don't get locked into the one round only mentality. Meaning that swapping between HE and AP is not just applicable, it is a necessity. Because when you find yourself with cruisers crossing your T, you best have that AP loaded to collect those citadels in bunches. And of course, those little red ribbons along the way, ouch. But be warned, captains, because getting close enough to ring those citadel bells also means that yours too, <laughs> oh, can't get wrong. Even by your fellow tier five cruisers, ouch, my mask. Now, as you're spamming the high explosive shells at the big ugly battleships, you're gonna come across some damage saturations or instances in which your shells just break apart repeatedly. In that case, captains, especially on the broadside, swap up to the AP and start collecting those orange penetration ribbons and putting down these big uglies on their last leg to collect something like, I don't know, a Kraken Unleashed. <laughs> or the Iron Duke after you've been burning and mercifully load up to the AP, fire into that broadside and cha-ching. 7,100 points of damage. <laughs> Finish them off for the AP rounds and collect yourself the arsonist along the way. <laughs> now the Emil is also armed with the hydroacoustic search. That means that you can come around and say hello to the little scumbag DDs that tried to give you the torpedoes just moments before and then unleash the holy broadside of boom boom good night <laughs> D22. <laughs> or, or in other cases, you can lift the veil on the little smoke clouds and see the little inbound metal fishes of anger and dance in between them. <laughs> Torpedo beats intensifies. <laughs> I think only turnabout is fair play. So while my ungodly reload rate is happening, fire off my torpedoes and boom, boom, take down a little mutt. <laughs> Now the torpedo armament isn't the best. I mean, it's nine kilometers and they are very powerful on the alpha damage, but I didn't actually get to use them all that much. I get to take down this little Belfast here for just pit and damage. Granted, I probably would have put all two torpedoes into him taking out. Oh, oh, torpedo beats, torpedo beats. Check that out. Oh, look how close that is. Let's see that in instant replay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Now with only three torpedoes per side, it is difficult to land these powerful little fishies, but when they do, oh how sweet it is. <laughs> Unfortunately, you still give up citadels, ouch. <laughs> but captains, I cannot state it enough. Even when you find yourself bottom tier, which will happen more often than not in the tier five matchmaking, do not shy away from laying into those cruisers broadside side with your AP rounds time and time again. Because Boom, you can take yourself down a Cleveland. Oh, take one right in the face. Oh, see his little metal fishies have the AP loaded still. Gonna go right into the broadside of this Sean Horst 4. 4,900 points of damage. Oh, take another binkage in the face. But now my starboard side torpedo twos are locked and loaded. Ready for bear a fire full effect into his broadside. He may not turn himself to his island. Trying to get skinny, show him my button. Try not to get Citadel through the rear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, swim faster! <laughs> bow, bow, bow! Oh, and good night, Shot Horse, for the win! <laughs> oh, captains, yeah, you do find yourself rolling into tier 7 matches more often than not. In fact, out of the 12 replays I had saved, only four of them were tier five matches. The rest were tier sixes and tier sevens, even distribution. So this ship will definitely have you say more often than not, Nom de Dieu de Putain Bordel du Mer de Salopre de Cunard d'Oncalade to Mer. Or close enough, something like that. <laughs> now, while I didn't entirely enjoy my time in the Emil, I can definitely see how some captains can really enjoy the ship and get a lot out of her, making her sing to high heavens. <laughs> Unfortunately, it just didn't really get on well with me and my play style and what I like to get out of my tier five matches. But the replay I picked out will hopefully showcase enough of the good and maybe some bad <laughs> that I found whilst in the Emil Berton. So without further ado, let's roll right into the replay. That sees us top tier in the tier five, four, five matchup on my favorite map, one of them at least, Big Race. Now, as we don't have a lot of time, because this is a small map, I'm just gonna run right through the captain skills, preventative maintenance to keep my stuff working, expert marksman to turn my turrets just a wee bit faster, and demolition expert to burn stuff even more better. <laughs> 
I don't have Consumer Expert yet, which would most definitely help my experience in the Emil. And for y'all captains that are looking to keep her, definitely get that thing. So too for Adrenaline Rush, because you do get popped in the face a lot. Now my upgrades, modules, and flags. You can see she is fully kitted out. And of course I got the module to keep my engines a turning. And of course, premium consumables as always. Now for my flags, I don't actually run any flags. I think I had been running my XP flag to get through the grind just a little bit quicker. But if you want to throw something on there, I would definitely recommend the speed one just to get you moving a wee bit faster. All right, well, we have the uh, northeasterly spawn. We're going to head on over to this little side and perform our little turning circles of death because the enemy fleet is going to be right there in Tally Ho. They are all right there. We already saw the Orions, but here is an Omaha. I'm going to fire my HE that was loaded in my guns, expecting to see some destroyers, but immediately swap up to my HE because I can do some very bad things to this Omaha. And it already started off with a fire and 3,900 points of damage. All right, he is staying on course. So I got to aim just a little bit below his nose and give him a wee bit of lead because they are kind of fast. And boom, boom, Citadel, 6,500 points of damage. He is, of course, loaded up his AP shooting back at my paws it looks like and they're all splish a splash ap loaded yet again he's staying on target showing me even more of a broadside and a boom <laughs> three citadels four citadels good night first blood omaha all right now i got the dugay sitting there rolling slow and low he is coming to a stop and i oh i came to a stop <laughs> oh boo how embarrassing i ran into the border stop border hump and fetch Oh, I always hate that when captains border up. You know, don't do it, captains. As soon as you roll into the border, get off of that sucker, man. Make it fail. But anyway, anyway, back to the Duque. I got the AP still loaded. And oh, penetrations and an overpin. He had been reversing. And he's firing AP as well. But it looks like, all right, well. I am worried about those big old battleships there because they are getting too close to comfort. But, oh, I finally connect with the AP rounds. 1,500 points of damage on the Duguay. I still have the AP loaded because he is still getting me the broadside. I don't want to use my HE because the like, broadside is so what you'll say. I want to penetrate very badly. And, bop, bop, another Citadel for 4,600 points of damage. He is less than 1,000. He's at, what, 672 right now. Still have the AP loaded. This should be a fire and forget mission. And he should be one and done. But look at those battleships in there. Incoming fires. And, boom, boom, there we go, the Duguay. But look at that. We got the Issy Juicy, we got the Orions, I got a couple of Orions down there, and all oh, the Ishi. Now I do swap up to the HE because now I am going against battleships and they are ready and ripe to be set afire, especially the Ishi Juicy, because we all know that the Ishi did the bold. Oh, look at all those shell breakages for right there. Oh, damn it. Well, we all know the Ishi went for a bold move and they actually kept all the fuel on their decks in buckets. So this thing just lights on fire, PDQ. Hey, <laughs> we got a butt fire tip of excellent so i'm gonna swap up to the orion because the issue should yeah should probably just let that burn so that means i need to maximize my damage potentials by lighting these other suckers on fire especially that orion that'd be nice but tag him on the butt now i found the lead to be a little weird with this ship the shells are kind of floaty so i have to extend my normal lead picture out just a wee bit further than what i normally would even with battleships so it may take you a little while to get used to it, or hell, you may just get into it and just start setting the world ablaze. <laughs> but it took me just a few times and a few games, and even still was a little inconsistent in my shot placements on these guys. But but anyway, anyway, come on, Orion, we did a fire, dang it! Sometimes this thing is just a uber flamethrower, and other times, oh, we got, we got a little Nikki in there too, yep. Now this is the empty center, so we always got to be mindful of what's going on in the center cap. And oh, there's the fire finally on the Orion. The Issy probably just let that thing burn out, but sometimes, oh, there's two fires. Oh my goodness, I didn't even realize that was two fires. Excellent. Yeah, you know, sometimes, you know, she is just a, sets the world ablaze, and other times, man, you can't get anything. You're rubbing sticks together, you're using magnifying glasses, and it just ain't working. Now that Orion had let those things burn. He's, he's still burning. Okay, he put them out. Yeah, my ticker damage counter has stopped ticking, so he definitely put those out. So let's see if I can relight the issue. He didn't use his repair part. He just let that thing burn. So, you know, he's, he's just letting the one fire go. When you got two fires, it's most most definitely you're probably going to want to put that out. Very few instances in which we will actually let two fires burn on your deck. But all right, now I know that Orion, his immunity window is up. He's got the British reload on the immunity window. So if I can light a fire on his decks, so I'm going to be burning him for another 40 seconds at least. But oh those don't light a fire but he disappears all right well Ishii Ishii is still not burning 
Even though our big ugly battleships are chucking some hot HE at his action. Come on, come on, get a fire, get a fire, and oh, take out a secondary gun. Oh, he is on fire though by somebody. Oh, it looked like that's a big fire, so he probably has the, oh, 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 kamikaze, kamikaze. Those things are just nasty, especially when they're top tier, and oh, oh nasty. <laughs> oh my goodness, those new explosions on the the new patch, to, uh, 6.10, is just nasty, man. I am liking that thing. It came out of the water in a big old fireball. Speaking of wannabe fireballs, come on! Oh, well, I take out us two AAs. Five shell breakages for two AA destructions. I mean, I love doing that. We do got sky cancer in this game. But come on, man. Where's the fire? Fire, fire, fire. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> fire. There we go. On the Orion. So he's probably going to let that burn, too. Good, good, good. Come on, Ishii. You are looking a little, well, you are looking charred, but I want to char you some more for 363 points of damage and a fire. Boo, boo. <laughs> oh, I dropped up detection. Oh, good, good, goody. Now it's time to become a little bit of a floating artillery. Oh, and I got a fire on the Orion. Excellent. He is right in the wall, so that kind of messes with the speed. So it can kind of throw off your shooting solution. I can't tell you how frustrating it is sometimes when you're playing with ships and uh, when, you're, when, you're fighting, when you're fighting against a ship who's right in that border, it can really, I don't know for you, but for me, it always messes up my shooting solutions. I have a hard time really gauging the speed and the lead. And when you have a reload rate like, the, oh, that's a nice little 1400. Oh, and he's, he's uh, put out his fire as well. Excellent. But when you have a reload rate as slow as this, especially for a cruiser, 12 second reload, for a tier five cruiser, ouch, man. It gets really rough when you start firing on those guys on the border and they just all splish or splash. But <laughs> anyway, anyway, Orion is looking like he wants another fire. <laughs> oh, so two to say, ishy, nice, nice. So we're just gonna round this island because we are detected by eye in the sky. So I can't be sitting still anymore. This French cruiser is the fastest tier five cruiser in the game right now. And it's just so fast, she'll run down almost every single destroyer that she'll come across as well, too. So that's really nice. But unfortunately, oh, there's another fire on the Orion. Now swap up to the Ishii. But unfortunately, that 12-second reload is rough, man. That is rough, rough, rough when you're trying to go against little DDs because you're not going to give them the one-shot good night. It's going to take a couple of salvos for you to pop those little destroyers. Oh, and there pop goes a fire on the Ishii. So I got two fires burning, so we'll just swap them between the two of them that I can shoot. There's another battleship in my range that he is kind of moving away from me but i want to keep compounding the the damage on these guys and there's another fire excellent on the orion and try to put them down is she definitely used his damage control he's got the ijn damage control so about 15 seconds maybe 10 oh that other guy's on fire too so that means the issue is right for being set ablaze one more time <laughs> and yeah i ask and it shall be given the fire on the issue Two still going on the Orion. Oh my goodness, I didn't remember what I was talking about because I just setting the world ablaze. Burn, baby, burn. <laughs> goodness gracious. But, oh, yes, yes. She is the fastest, but going after those little destroyers with a 12 second reload without the adrenaline rush, got another fire for the high caliber, means that she can be anti-DD, but it's gonna be very difficult, especially going against ships like that Kamikaze. The Kamikaze could fire a set of torpedoes, and within two shots, he could have his torpedo tubes loaded and locked and loaded and firing at your paws again. But along the way, I finally take that down that Orion, earn the arsonist, of course, along the way. Nice, nice, nice. And anyway, I am getting a little close for comfort. I have a nice range. Oh, another fire, excellent. I have 14.9 kilometer range, which is nice when you're playing tier fours and fives, even sixes, but once you start to get up into little, little tier sevens, the 14 and a half, that's kind of dangerous because you are right within that swatting zone, the sit wrecking deletion zone level of those big dog ugly battleships, man. It's just nasty. The French cruiser cannot repel the fire power of those kinds of magnitudes, man. But oh, this is making a fire. <laughs> I got another one on the issues, Ishii. Ishi. They are all fire. Finally starting to shoot at me again. We got two Orions left. Oh, they are all shooting at me and the issue. This is not going to be good. Oh, AP from that Orion. Eh. Oh, <laughs> ow, 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 ow. Oh my God, where'd my health go? <laughs> oh, that hurt. Oh, I, oh, oh, ah, and one and done by the other Orion. I think it got dropped on by the carrier as well. <laughs> oh my God, that happened. That just happened. 
Oh my goodness gracious, man. My fire finally went out, so it looks like the damage counter has ticked over. The issue is still trying to recuperate his health, and we're just left with the two enemy big uglies. <laughs> but oh my word, you can see right there, Captains, as soon as you start coming under any kind of concentration of fire from even the Tier 4 Orion battleship, there will go your health like that. <laughs> it was done. <laughs> oh my god, that was brutal. That was brutal. Oh, I tell you. The Emil is lightly armored. I mean, it is paper mache. And pe people want to talk trash about the Omaha Tier 5 being lightly armored. I would take the Omaha armor any day over the Emil's, uh, at least in my experience. It has just been bad <laughs> as far as getting sit wrecked. But oh, oh, look at that. Orion's going to take a couple of torpedoes. Boom, boom. Nice, nice, nice. But I think you can agree that pretty much showcases what this Emil has to offer. Starting those fires. Oh, look at that. Oh, and the issue is finally down. Starting those fires. But when the cruisers show you that broadside, load that armor piercing, captains, and just unleash the Citadel fury on those suckers. It is something to behold with this Emil. If you find yourself in the right kind of matchmaking with Tier 5, even Tier 6, and even Tier 7 cruisers in the majority, you can rack up some serious damage damage with that armor piercing and then of course burning love for every single battleship <laughs> oh, oh look at that sky cancer coming in for that all drop on that orion oh is he gonna dance between those maybe oh no no he's gonna take one he's gonna take one and he should be done good job oh sure well, Captains, we finished that round and sailing on to victory to the tune of 120, we'll call it 123,000 points of damage off of seven Citadels, 14 fires for three kills, earning the first blood, Arsonist Award, and High Caliber. To finish, tops of the charts in the tier 4 5 matchup with 1624 base experience. Not a bad return on the XP, given that no caps were taken, so that was just straight up damage numbers. And you see in the detail report, look at that, not too bad, not too bad, but look at that AP to HE ratio, 132 versus 32, and I still earn more armor piercing damage than the high explosives, yowza. But then again, of course, you look down below and you see 55 and a half thousand points of damage off of fires. So to boot, that is just over 88,000 points of damage from my HE shells versus 34 and a half from the armor piercing, of course, on the broad side, cruisers are lovely ringing those cruiser citadel bells and after taxes with a premium account 231,000 credits with just the standard 126k so not too shabby on the tier 5 payday and not too shabby for the tier 5 game in the Emile Berton All right, captains. Well, that was my review of the French Navy's tier 5 cruiser Emile Berton. I like I said in the beginning, I was really looking forward to actually getting out of this ship. Normally, when I first get into a ship, I, it either sings to high heavens or I have a little bit of a rough learning feeling out spell. And I definitely had that with the meal. And I did get better with her. Granted, I didn't have the concealment expert, so I, I got to point that out, asterisk that thing. But uh, even without it, I just didn't really find the gameplay to be all that compelling, all that exciting. Uh, I'm sure other captains are really going to enjoy the ship. I can see the tools that she has available to her. I mean, that AP is nasty, and so is burning down a lot of ships. And those 9 kilometer torpedoes, if and when they do hit, are brutal. But just for me and my Tier 5 mentality of matchmaking and my and mentality overall, she's just not one for me. So I definitely am looking forward to moving onwards and upwards towards the 6, the Tier 6, La Galissonia, a.k.a. the Gasoline. <laughs> But in any case, Captains, I hope you all enjoyed the video and learned a little bit about how to, and of course, as always, how not to, Captain the Emile Berton. <laughs> so until next time, Captains, I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in-game. Have fun. Fair seas. <laughs>